Really like this latch on the new bumper. Up like this. Drop our table with our convenient little latch. Boom. Damn. A vice would be so perfect right now. Three, I put my kettlebell on here, so it was another mistake I had to kind of fix. There it is. And I mean, look at this. This is like Martha Stewart living or something like. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is gonna be a lot of fun. We are building a drop down table for the tire carrier bumper that we built at home just a couple weeks ago. And this is a fun project, it adds a ton of usability to the truck. Um, I built one before, I loved it, so I'm gonna build another one, bring you guys along for it. We got some steel, we got some hinges, we're gonna use the welder and the plasma cutter, so we're in for a good time. Let's get started. All right, let's get a basic idea of what we're doing. Back in my truck, tire carrier, swing out, recovery box. Now we're gonna use this space right here to make a table that is on hinges up like this when you're driving and then drops down when you're ready to camp and you get all this usable space and it's super handy. So that's what we're gonna be working on. Let's take a look at some of the parts we're using. Okay, first step, hinges. This is what the table is going to hinge on and this hinge um, is I think a gate hinge. I got it from the hardware store in the weldable section and if you notice it only opens that much. It does not wrap all the way around. That's important because I want the table to have a hard um, stop. So this is the type of hinge I'm going to be using. Opens up, stops right there. Those are pretty heavy duty. I think that is um, maybe 10 gauge steel. Okay. Um, I'm going to use some of this tubing. This is three quarter inch 16th wall tubing. This is the same stuff I used on the awning. And then I just went to the steel supply and got this little piece of 48 inch by two feet wide, six or 18 gauge steel. Um, it's very thin, it's a little flexible. I probably would have even gone 20 gauge if they had it, they didn't have it. But this is gonna be the surface. Um, this is going to be the frame. Now, ideally, I think I would use quarter inch aluminum or even 16th aluminum like this but they didn't have any of that i couldn't find any it it's a lot more expensive and i'm not set up to weld on it so this time i'm going to try out this really thin metal uh again 18 gauge the tubing and see what we can come up with and how much it weighs so let's get started okay a couple tools We've got our angle grinders, of course. This one has a flap disc. This is great for sanding and smoothing out corners after you cut them. This is another angle grinder. You don't need to have two. You could have just one and switch these blades out. But this has a cutoff wheel. I'm gonna use this um, to cut the steel tubing. Now, here's the welder I'm gonna be using. Pretty fancy machine. Definitely don't need a machine that's this capable or this expensive to do this project. Um, but this is the Forney 220 MP multi-process machine running on shielding gas. I've got it plugged into 220 <laughs> all the way at the dryer outlet. Um, and I'll be using this machine today. This is like a thousand dollar plus machine, but they also make a machine that's only about $230 called the Forney Easy Weld. And you could do this project with that $230 machine. So check that out if you're interested in just getting started. Another tool I'm gonna be using is a plasma cutter. This thing is so rad. This is the Forney 40P plasma cutter, kind of their top of the line plasma cutter. But again, you don't need to have a machine that is this capable or this expensive. Um, they make another budget friendly machine that includes a um, air compressor. And if you don't even want to go with this brand, um, there's other brands out there that make inexpensive plasma cutters. You can skip the plasma cutter altogether and you can just use the angle grinder and cutoff wheel. That'll work just fine. I'm just using these because I own them and they make the project that much faster. So, all right, we've covered tools, we've covered materials, time to build. Okay, let's talk a little bit about dimensions. So, like I said, I've already built one of these before, so I have to do less research and less design. I'm just kind of going off the same dimensions that I had before. For my particular track, that's 43 inches long. 14 and a quarter wide. And the reason I did that is so that it comes up just to the top of the tailgate and it comes the full width before it hits the dropped um, tailgate 
and it doesn't block the tail light. So that's the reason why I went with those dimensions. Now I'm using some other steel just as a straight edge um, for my plasma cutter. I don't have a big long um, level, so something like this actually works pretty good. The dimensional steel is pretty dang straight, at least straight enough for this project, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I've already got it marked out with some chalk or some uh, slate, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and make the first cut, so let's get into it. I keep saying that. Perfect. You know what? I'm gonna actually use my chop saw. This is a wood cutting saw with a metal blade. You've seen it before. I said I was gonna use that cut off wheel, but I already have this, so this is gonna be faster. But then again, you could still use that one. This is just faster. As you can tell, I've done a bunch more welding since my last clip. I haven't put on the hinges. I welded them straight on top of here. You know, this table is not really turning out the way I was hoping. I thought it was gonna be like the best table I ever made. Uh, I don't know if it's really close to that. So, but I did do a bunch of welding. I also really just realized it really warped. Ooh, it's still hot. <laughs> I really warped the table uh, and it's kind of bowing in the middle. So I'm gonna have to stand on this and see if I can't straighten it out a little bit, but it's gonna work, but I'm just not quite as happy. I, I think that the, the uh, plywood with metal over the top and the aluminum angle that I did last time was actually pretty good. So well, we're gonna see. Let's hope this thing turns out. Alright guys, day two, I'm adding this little brace underneath on the back side so that the hinge is not just pulling on this top sheet of metal. It's going to have to pull on this as well and keep it from lifting this. You know what, this product is getting a little heavy. <laughs> I think ideally a piece of aluminum is the way to go for this, just a single piece of like quarter inch aluminum be a little lighter um, and less complicated but we're gonna roll with it see how much it weighs in the end and uh, add a brace
have a bite. But go ahead and cook it up. Okay, now I'm looking for a good spot to put a little clip to hold this guy up. I think I'm gonna come up with something right here. Ooh, that should work. Come on, buddy. I feel like I'm being rude, but I just don't want to feel. Like Yeah. Okay. Can you eat some? A vice would be so perfect right now, but I do not own a vice at the moment. So, I'm going to use this. What's that? Yes. All right, check this out. This little bit is a quarter 20 tap and drill bit. No pre-drilling or anything, so. Yeah, no, I have four already. You have others, right? Yeah. Quarter twenty bolt. So the concept is working perfectly, only that when I would open this up to drop the table, it would undo the bolt. So I had to add a nut to 
counter tighten so the bolt doesn't want to move. However, that means I need to make a new one of these little latches, so start over. All right guys, the project is all done and I'm super excited. It actually turned out a lot better than I thought it was. There was parts during this project where I thought that I just wasted about 60 bucks of steel and wanted to give up, but I'm glad I didn't because the overall uh, final product is better than my last one. I made some improvements, I learned some, and I'm gonna go over all the details and all the mistakes and all that kind of stuff. But first, let me just show you how everything works together and you can see kind of just what we made. So really like this latch on the new bumper, easy to use. This guy opens up like this, snap shut there. Quickly open this guy, drop the tailgate, and then we can drop our table with our convenient little latch, boom. Super happy with the size of this table, everything functions together, and I mean, look at this. This is like Martha Stewart living or something, like upgraded kitchen status. There's plenty of room. You can play the piano here. Anyways, really, really stoked with how everything turned out. Um, overall, I really like it. So yeah, thanks for watching the build. Now we're going to do a close look at all the details and we'll go over how much it weighs and all the mistakes I made and all that kind of stuff. So let's dive into the details. Let's take a look at some of the details and just get a good idea of how this thing looks on the truck and all the fitment, because this is like something I'm really excited about, is how close everything is, because I really like design that's nice and clean and snug. And the cool thing is with the bumper brackets, um, it's adjustable, they're slots, so I can move, I'm gonna move this back just a hair so that it's not too close for vibration, because it is just maybe a little too close right now, but overall, I really, really like it. This is the new bumper um, that I made myself with the brackets I designed and had laser cut and very soon I'm gonna have those brackets available actual parts to buy or you can reach out to me if you have your own plasma cutter I can get you the file as well but um, I ordered myself a plasma cutter so that I could make these parts and sell like a parts kit so you guys could build this too so I think that's pretty cool but here is the whole setup all together so much cleaner than the last one. So happy. Added this to help support the tire. So when you put the tire on, all you gotta do is just set it on there and then you can fiddle with the lug nuts. I still need to do one more or two more holes for the lugs, but this is rock solid because it's to that plate really snug. And the piece of uh, tubing is big enough to support the hub, so it doesn't really wanna go anywhere at all. Um, what else? Okay, new bumper has the recessed hitch to really like. I still need to make a quarter inch thick plate that comes out just a little bit right here and has two loops and also just goes under here. The hitch is recessed into the tube. You can see me cut it maybe in this video right here. Right there. Cut. I don't know how I did that, but. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a plate under here just to reinforce and then also a little loop for putting your chain if you are towing something. You've got your trailer hookup and I went through a puddle that was like five feet deep so it's full of water. Air hookup right here so all you got to do is push it out from the backside. Stays nice and clean and dry. Um, 
reverse camera still got to figure out the optimal spot for that um, I'm gonna come up with something that protects it because right now if I lean if I have this open and I lean into the truck I'll bump into this sometimes so so shackle hangers on the back nice and wide super freaking strong and they are not just to the face of the bumper they're actually one bracket that's quarter inch thick that goes through the bumper all the way all the way all the way all the way down here so you've got one two three four bolts on each side possible that's a total of eight <laughs> for the bumper so definitely stronger than the frame probably a frame stiffener by this point really like that cuts right through the bumper really like that so that is the new lower bumper let's take a look at the swing out and then we'll get to the table which is what this video is all about swing out on here welds so much better this time um, I got a 220 extension cord and I was able to adjust the welder with a much higher wire speed which I had no idea I was super low on my wire speed so this made a huge difference the welds are so much cleaner and um, I've had to do so much less grinding almost no grinding <laughs> for the swing out made the work a lot less so much much nicer fit and finish um, on the ends smoother just getting down my system getting down the design knowing what I'm gonna do ahead of time lets me do a better job because um, I'm making less mistakes so let me show you how this works okay so this is the latch system that I came up with I really like I mean I say I came up with it I designed this catch and stuff but people have been making these forever I'm sure someone's done something very similar, but I really like this one. Um, I use a piece of tubing from the swing out to make the catch so it's efficient as far as materials go. And this is how it works. This is a um, D-Statico 344 hinge or a latch. Really nice and heavy duty. Um, I like it better than the one I, you saw in my last video. It has a nicer handle and it's just a sturdier feeling. But you lift up on this, pull that with your thumb, and boom. This guy swings open, and you can probably hear that pin right here. It has two locking positions, so it can lock all the way out like that. But I usually just keep it locked at the vertical, and then, yeah, there is the back side of the table. So let's take a look at the details of this. Okay, so this is my new table. It weighs 15 pounds, which is kind of heavy. Um, it is steel. I was hoping to be able to use aluminum, but I couldn't find any. And I wanted to give steel a go because it's a little more common. And um, yeah, it's not too much heavier than I think aluminum would be because um, I'm using pretty thin gauge steel. And with aluminum, you got to use a lot more material to get the same rigidity. So I'm guessing an aluminum table this size would be quarter inch or 3 16th with some bins um, would probably be, and that weight was including the hinges, would probably be 10 pounds, maybe 11 pounds. So we're talking about five pounds difference, not a game changer for me. Although it would be fun to try out the aluminum, but here's a little latch I made, you saw? Really like this. A um, Couple people said, oh, you should put a little stop there so that it doesn't vibrate loose. I might, but honestly, this is really snug, like, there's just no, there's no vibration, and then there's no, uh, there's no weight, no no force wanting to push this down. So I really don't think it's ever gonna vibrate loose. But um, just so you know, I thought about that. <laughs> so that is all that's holding the table up. It's vertical. There it is. Drops down, and just like my last table, it is on those hinges that that is as far as they will physically open because they lock up on each other. And then if it gets forced, the table itself is hit on the back of the hinges. So that is what holds it. Uh, I've had my 70 pound kettlebell sitting on the top here. I think I have an Instagram photo. Totally supports it fine. So way more than I hope to ever put on here, but it can hold, but it, can hold it. <laughs> Let's look at how everything functions together. So this guy comes up, that guy comes down. Perfect. <laughs> Even when this is on a hill, it still can clear. So tolerance, just getting stuff, like nailing this kind of stuff when you're doing it yourself, for me is like really satisfying because 
that's the kind of stuff I look for when I'm doing the build. You know, like if I had made it right here, it would have been bummed that it was a gap. So just kind of getting those proportions to where I really like it is big for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, check out how functional the space is now. We've got my sleeping area, cooking area, everything's good to go. So super stoked on this table. I thought I wasn't gonna be, <laughs> but I'm actually a lot happier with this table than my last one. Uh, making out of metal just feels a little more professional and um, it's definitely more sturdy. And yeah, I'm really stoked on it. Okay, let's talk about mistakes because I made a bunch of mistakes. Uh, number one, this little latch of mine, <laughs> this little latch of mine, okay, number one, this little latch, I made it the first time before I put this nut on the back and it actually turned out a lot nicer than this particular piece of metal that I used because I had to remake it. So ideally I'd make a more aesthetically pleasing looking one of these. Um, I welded the hinges right onto top of this and I did uh, longer welds and put way too much heat into it because I was being impatient and warped the metal. Number three, I put my kettlebell on here, which it totally supports, but I did that before I put this brace on the bottom and this hinge pulled on the metal right there and kind of accentuated that warping. So that's another mistake I had to kind of fix, but it still got that warp in it. Not a, not a big deal, just aesthetics, but another mistake nonetheless. Um, my welds look crappy on here because I was kind of just rushing and I should have turned my machine down and I popped through the metal in a couple places and right here I didn't fill so I need to fill this with I'm going to use some caulking and just fill up any little holes so I don't have any rain getting in there number five or six I put this bolt way too high so dumb so this thing would contact with it I had to cut a little hole in there and I'm going to fill that with caulking too but that was another mistake um what else so I left these open. That's actually not a mistake. I thought it was going to be because I was just being lazy, but you can actually just get these little plastic caps that push in there and it'll look kind of pro, kind of finished. So I'm gonna get those. Maybe I'll show a picture of those on Amazon right here. Um, what else? I'm sure there's more mistakes I'm missing, um, but I guess that just goes to show even with all the mistakes, I'm still really happy with how this turned out. So. Don't let yourself get too in your head about how well you can make something or if it's gonna turn out. Don't overthink it, just go for it. Learn along the way. I think you'll be happier with the result than you might have thought, so. All right, you've seen an overview of it. You watched me build it. You saw all the details and all the mistakes. So what the heck do I have this table on the back of my truck for anyways? It's not for concerts and DJing, it's for cooking. So let me show you how I use it, how I set it up with my little Pelican Case kitchen. So I keep all my cooking necessities in this case. You might have seen it before. Hashtag Pelican. Hashtag sponsored by Pelican. Uh, there it is. This is my little pancakes and coffee in a box. So I'm gonna pull all this stuff out, probably cut kind of quickly through it, but then I'll show you just how I use the table and how much usable space there is. So let's do it. Ah, oh, nice little towel. This is why we have a feasting table, fold down table, not one of those little micro, not useful little tables. This setup gives you so much space. I mean, check it out. More space than my own kitchen at home. <laughs> but honestly guys, this is the setup that I built it for. Um, I've got just a classic Coleman stove, the two burner. Um, the bottle fits on here. These things work great. Um, I've had some people say, you're crazy for eating off of stainless steel or steel with paint on it. It's going to get in the food. I don't cut directly onto the metal, you guys. I'm not a savage. I use a cutting board I got on 
uh, Amazon, these little thin ones. They just stow in the Pelican cases. So that's what I use here. Usually just making pancakes. You guys get the idea. Um, I got a little silverware setup roll. Probably all dirty from the last time I went on the trip. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's a little idea, a little uh, little look at why I built the table and the reason why I built it the way I did, so big. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Really appreciate all the subscribers, all of you guys, all the comments, all the thumbs up. Um, the channel's been growing like crazy. We're like at 13,000 subscribers, I think, or nearly there. So continue to subscribe and watch. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one.